Okay, today I want to talk about uh, setting up multiple websites using IIS 7 running on Windows Server 2008 standard platform using what's called the multiple ports methodology. There are uh, three basic ways of doing that in IIS 7. Uh, one of them is the multiple ports methodology, and that's what this demonstration is about. And then there are two others. Another one is setting up uh, specific IP addresses to the websites themselves using the IP address methodology. And then the third is using the host headers methodology, combining FTP and IIS 7. I am going to demonstrate here the multiple ports methodology. So we're going to be creating three, three particular websites that we're going to touch from another machine on the network, which is my Windows 7 Ultimate machine. Uh, and we're going to be using three unique port assignments uh, for each of those websites. And then we're going to have to go out and on the server and open up the firewall for those three ports, and I'll explain that a little later. Right now I'm logged into Windows Server 2008 here, and I've done a little bit of preliminary work uh, in setting this up uh, for the video. Uh, if I go into C and INET Pub, uh, I've created an FTP root and a local user that we'll need for FTP later. And I've created these three accounts, Ellie, Granny, and Jethro, and within each one of them, uh, I've put an index.html file that corresponds to their particular uh, website. So I've done that ahead of time. Uh, and then the, the other thing that I have done is I've gone into Internet Information Services and um, set that up so that we have the default website already set up and everything. And so now I want to uh, demonstrate how s you can go about setting up these three websites using uh, unique ports. Okay, from the uh, Internet Information Services Manager uh, window here, we're going to create those three websites, um, one for Ellie, one for Jethro, one for Granny. And uh, but before I do that, let me show you that on the default website here, if I click that and select bindings and scroll down to that particular binding and click edit, you'll see here that we have bound um, well, the server did, rather, uh, HTTP protocol to all unassigned IP addresses, port 80, by default. And by default, the uh, port 80 um, is open on the server. So there's a hole there for port 80 traffic going to and from so that uh, it's not required that the user do that. And that's set up by default when IIS 7 was installed. However, when we create the three additional ports that must be unique for the three websites, we're going to have to... Uh, open up the firewall as I said. So let me go ahead and click OK here and close. Let me go up to the sites. Let me right click and create a new website. And the first one I'm going to create is the Jethro site. And its uh, container is in C, INET Pub, uh, FTP Root, and Jethro. We're going to bind the HTTP protocol here for all unassigned IP addresses to a port we're going to set up for Jethro, which is port 8080. All right, and then we're going to click OK. All right, so we've created Jethro. Now we're going to cr create the Granny website. So let's type in Granny site. And the physical uh, location of the container is going to be C, INET pub, FTP root, uh, Granny. And for this purpose, it could have been any place, but I did it for uh, FTP. Uh, so when we do that later, it'll be set up. All right, so the HTTP protocol here has been bound to port uh, 8081, in this case for Granny, all unassigned IP addresses. All right, and then the third site we're going to create is Ellie's. So this is the Ellie site. And we're going to dig down into her container and bind HTTP to port 8082 and click OK. All right, Granny's site is got an X next to it, which means it's not running, so I'm going to restart it. And Ellie's site has an X as well, so I'm going to restart that one to get all three of them going. And uh, let's go up to uh, sites here. And I want to take you into this area and show you some a couple of different things. Um, one, we want to look at, for instance, the Jethro site. Uh, we want to see on the binding 
uh, here. Um, but before I do that, let me let me explain that uh, when these three sites were created, there's a unique ID number assigned to them. Um, this is how IIS7 keeps track of the sites that you create in the interface. The very first site was created by IIS7 when it was installed, so that's got a number one ID. The second site that we created, the first one we created today, or the second one total here, was the Jethro site, number two, then we created Granny's, number three, and Ellie's, number four. Um, the significance of the ID number will, will be uh, obvious when we uh, get into looking at the logs later on. Um, the uh, logs are associated with the ID number that was created here, so we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's get to Jethro here, and I want to select Jethro and go to the bindings, and you can see here that uh, it is bound to 8080 as we talked about. All right, so uh, what I want to do is uh, these three sites are up and running, but I want to break one of them. Uh, and we can do that by going to Ellie's site and going into the bindings and highlight the binding and edit it. And instead of an 8082 port, which is unique, I'm going to go back and give it an 8080, which is the Jethro port assignment, if you recall. And so this should break this site because we, have to, we can't have any overlapping ports. Uh, so I'm going to click OK here. We, we do get a, an immediate message that says the binding 8080 is assigned to another site, and we know that. That's Jethro. I'm going to go ahead and ignore that for now and say yes here and close. And I want to go ahead and close this interface and then reopen it and show you what happens when we break a site like this uh, without giving it a unique port. Here you can see the LE site has a little black box uh, in front of it. It's kind of like the stop button on a CD-ROM drive or a DVD-ROM drive. Uh, that indicates that that site has been stopped. And if we try to start it, it's not going to let us start it. So let's go up here and click Start. And we immediately get a message that says that the website cannot be started, uh, that it is uh, using a port assigned to another website. So they must be unique. The port assignments here must be unique. So let's go and fix the problem. So Ellie site is highlighted, and let's click Bindings. And let's highlight the binding again, and then Edit. And I believe the binding we initially gave it was to port 8082. And so let's change that back and click OK and close. And then let's uh, make sure that we restart the site and that it is functioning properly. OK. All right, so right now uh, we are on the server local platform. And we are um, behind the firewall so that uh, the firewall should not come into play here. So these three websites should function as is uh, internally. So I'm going to click Internet Explorer and bring it up. And the internal loopback address is 127.0.0.1. So I'm going to go to the website corresponding to that loopback IP address. And if I didn't put anything after this with a colon, it would be the default site, which I've created. But I'm going to go ahead and pull up what should be Jethro's, which is port 8080 here. And so let me click on that. And it does bring up Jethro's website. So we can see that internally we can reach Jethro, uh, Jethro's website because the firewall isn't into play even though port 8080 is still closed. All right, so let's go out. Um, let me just minimize this. And let's go out to my Windows 7 Ultimate machine. And let me try to bring up the Jethro website using the IP address of the web server, which is 192.168.1.175. And let's use port 8080. Now, this should not work because the firewall uh, does not have a hole in it currently for port 8080. And as you can see, it's waiting for port 8080 response that it's not going to get because that port is closed. So we need to fix that. So let's go ahead and minimize here, and let's come back. Um, give me one second. Let's go to the server, and let's uh, go into the firewall. So we're going to click on Start Control Panel, 
And let's go to the firewall here and open it up. And we're going to allow a program through the firewall. And what we're going to do is open up three ports for ports 8080, 8081, and 8082. All right. And to do that, we get into the Windows firewall settings and click on Add Port. And then uh, we're going to call this port 8080 for the name of this hole we're creating. And we're going to give that port 8080 assignment TCP. Uh, it is a connection-oriented uh, port, so here we have port 8080 assigned. Let's do the same thing for port 8081. And TCP, and click OK. So we have two now, and let's click uh, on here on the Add Port button and create the third one. And 8082. TCP, click OK. And so now we've created three holes in the firewall for the three ports that we need so traffic can get to those from outside the firewall using the IP address of the server. All right, let's click OK and close the firewall. And let's make sure that all the sites are up and running, and they are. And so now let's go back out to uh, the Windows 7 platform. And let's uh, get back into Internet Explorer. And uh, let me go back to another tab here, and let's type in HTTP, and let's go to Ellie's website, which is port 8082. So it's uh, 192.168.1.175, colon, 8082, and we should be able to reach that website now, uh, and we do. So that proves that now with the firewall open, with a hole for port 8080, we're able to reach Ellie's website, and we should be able to reach Jethro's and Granny's as well. All right, so let me go back out to the server. The last thing I want to show you in this demonstration is the logs. Uh, I talked about, if you go to the sites here, let's, uh, let's take a look at Jethro's site, because we did hit, well, let's look at Ellie's. We just looked at Ellie, and we just hit hers. So let's go to ID number four here. Uh, which is what is assigned to the Ellie website. And let's go out to the logs, and to get to the logs on the server, we right-click and open computer, and go to the C drive, uh, inetpub, logs, log files. And you'll notice we have uh, three folders here, W3, SVC1, 2, and 4. What the W3 stands for is World Wide Web, the SVC stands for service, and these numbers are the corresponding ID numbers assigned by IIS7. Um, Ellie's was number four that I just talked about, so let me double-click on it and right-click and open uh, the log itself, and let me expand it so we can see it on the screen. Now, we should see a port 8082 assignment here. Uh, for reaching that particular website, and we do. It's right here. So that proves that uh, IIS7 logged our attempt to get to port 8082 for Ellie's website, and it logged it here uh, as port 8082. So that's the, the significance, rather, of the logs uh, here so that you can keep track of uh, and monitor traffic to those websites. So this has been a demonstration of creating uh, three multiple websites using the multiple ports methodology.